we had this great idea to uh, invite some of the other villages in for our number 84 podcast. We've done one of these every year at DEF CON because um, I think maybe there's some bad locations that you may not know how to get to certain villages or what's going on there. So we have two. We have Nina, who runs the biohacking village, and hey. Ty Short running hardware hacking. Hardware hacking. Awesome. So we got awesome. two of the villages here. So what we want to do is just kind of talk a little bit about um, your village so then you can get out of here and pack up your room. Okay. Yeah, so tell us it, all about yourself, what your background is, what you do, and what you did at and, DEF CON. And your date of birth and your social security number, your home address. I'd give it to you if you wanted it. I, I do. I want it all. Look at that face. <laughs> and then she would turn around and get all that information from you because <laughs> she probably already has she it. She can. I, yes. I do, actually. She's already implanted me with a chip. Do you want one? No. We're doing implants later, too. No, I don't want anything implanted in me. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of on the makes... fence about this. This is so cool. You should kind of do it. No, no, I don't like it. It makes me queasy. You want to touch it? No. <laughs> I already did. I touched it. That's the quote of the day. Oh, I touched so it. so bad. <laughs> It's so bad. I don't want to touch it. So really quick, um, I also have, I'm from New York, so I throw in the New York accent every once in a while unintentionally. So do I. Awesome. So it's okay. Cool. So I run the biohacking village and essentially it's to make the human experience better by just enhancing it with technology. Um, this year is actually the first full year of the village. A lot of exciting things have happened. We had DARPA, we had the FBI, we had DIY. A lot of implants have happened. Um, that's the major thing I think that's going on. Um, maybe 200 people so far have been implanted. Wow, that's fantastic. What, what do the implants do? What do you want them to do? That's a, the actual question. So mine are very- I want them to make me lose oh, weight. Let me think <laughs> on that one. Can that could be really you can make special. <laughs> you, should, you should program it so it electrifies you every time you reach out for something. I'd pay for that. That would suck, actually. <laughs> every time I reach out for something, actually. I'm, I'm keyboarding. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I think that would not be a great plan. So my background is in bioinformatics. I work in hospitals. I protect the data information of the patients inside. So for me, my chips are connected to my laptop um, as a security measure because I'm HIPAA compliant. Huh. So if I'm not within two to three feet of my laptop, it goes to sleep. And when I come back, I don't know who's around me. I have a lot of people that I work with. So I don't know what kind of job they have. So if Michelle was with me, she's not working in the medical field. She's not shady. HIPAA shady. shady. So you are kind of shady. Yeah. <laughs> so I have shady it so Asian. that. New Twitter. Ooh, shady, shady Asian. as opposed to sultry. Yeah. Mm. Sorry. I like sultry. I keep is sultry. it RFID? I have an RFID and an NFC. Aren't so, you worried about getting cloned? No, because I actually clear them before I come here. Really? Yes. Anytime I go to a conference, I clear them out. And what's the power source? Um, you know what? That's a great question. I can't remember right now. That's like true to God. I don't remember yeah. right now. No, I mean, do they ever run out of power? No. Really? It's passive. Because they're tiny. Yeah. Do you want to touch it? Okay, touch now, it. Now, I touched now, it already. Now you now have to, to touch, touch it. it. So you have to relax your hand. Don't poke her. Don't yeah, poke. Don't, don't poke me. No pokey. Relax. I can't. I'm so nervous. <laughs> oh. He's touching it. It's so cool. <laughs> you have to touch it. Oh. Because yeah. hey, hey. huh. there's two. Oh, no. Oh, Feel it? So <laughs> it's really cool. Really, I, uh, everybody it's wants to touch it It's the size of a now. grain of rice. No, I don't. Both want to of them are. One's a little bigger than the other, like a large That's grain of rice so and a small long. grain of rice. So, Nina, how long have you had them? Since February. Yeah. I touched it. You did. So proud of you. You're so pink right now. <laughs> I, I, I touched it this morning. So. That's just weird. You know what's happening up here, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's just so weird, but it's cool at the same time. I kind of like it. And so you program them how? Because you say you wipe them and then you can reprogram them, obviously. Yeah, I have a... Oh, God. I'm so blank right now. I'm so sorry. I have a... Well, it's not like uh, you've been doing anything for the last four days. <laughs> right. You're absolutely right. Um, I have a circle thing that I use and I program whatever I want onto it and then I put it onto my hand and it programs it into it. Is so that if, the technical term, circle thing? Circle yeah, because I can't remember what it's okay. called right now. In my head, I see it. I probably have a picture of it on my phone. So essentially... Um, if I go outside and I'm talking to someone and I don't have cards on me because I lost all my cards right now, I can take somebody's phone and say, okay, this is cool. Let's continue this conversation. 
here's my contact information. Gotta go. And then they just contact me later. It's a lot easier than having to sit there and write my email onto someone's phone. So besides proximity, so you have like a, a business card in one and a proximity security in the other. Mm -hmm. Huh. That is interesting. No, it's actually in the same one. Sorry. Oh, oh, in the same one, yep. but you have two. Yeah. I don't use my NFC that often. Okay. I'm still tactilely <laughs> not Freaked joining. out. Yes, yes, just a tad bit. So, Nina, tell us what you did this year. Tell us about your village and how it went. Sometimes the lines were longer than the sky talks. <laughs> and that made me super happy. For being a first year full village, I thought that was great and super awesome. And where, where were you located? If you went to the 26th floor, all the way down the hall to the left. So just stepchild all the way down. And was that a good location for you or not? You know what? I'm going to be totally selfish in this. I'm going to say no because we had to clean up constantly for mm. the parties. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, but you still had lines. Because, still had lines. Because I was always curious, because I know they tried to put a bunch of people up on the 26th, and we were curious about how it worked out for them with the... Uh, there was a lot of congestion. The, yeah. 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 And you had a contest this year, right? We did have a contest. So if anybody took a Fitbit and just manipulated it to do something that it wasn't supposed to be doing, as far as monitoring body functions, things like this, Body Hacks, which is another um, conference for biohacking, is giving away prizes for that. Huh. Wow. That ends at 12 today. And it's up on the 26th floor. You have to see Susan for that. So you have an hour and 15 minutes if you want to compete in that. Yeah. And how long if people want to get implanted? That starts at 11.30. So. It's probably going to go out. for half an hour to an hour. And then I'm shutting the village down. So any questions from the audience for biohacking? Yes. Okay, so the question how do you was, get an how do you get an implant? I'm going to, can you hold that? Legitimately, the needle is about that big. But the, Ugh. no, no, no. There's a reason. Ugh. There's a reason. <laughs> so the implant Ugh. goes over here. You have, it's the fleshy part of your hand, Ugh. so it's not interfering. <laughs> it's not interfering with anything. Um, you can actually see my scar, but it, it, you literally have to look for it. Um, the bore is not that, it's not that big to me. I have gauges, so um, it's just a needle. Oh, Essentially, it's just a needle. It's just a needle. <laughs> stop saying needle. So the, more, the better question is, how do you get it out? Um, if you want to touch it later, I'll let you guys touch it. Touch it. You hashtag touch, touch, it. touch it. Everyone in the room is going to touch Nina. Hashtag touch Nina. Um, <laughs> this is a PG-13 podcast. No, it's totally <laughs> legit. It's right under my skin. I feel like if I got a cat scratch, I can just push it out. That's literally where it is. See, the cutting you to get it out doesn't bother me. The needle kills me. <laughs> do you want me to bring one? I should have brought one for you. Oh, no, so thank God. Do you, you, do you guys want to see that live? I can call them all. Ooh, we could do a live implant. Okay, do it. For Chris. I'll do it. Do it. Not on me. I don't want any. Oh. No, I, someone will volunteer here. Let me right? see if you, oh, let me Who see will volunteer? Uh, this guy right here, Jim Moore, he'll volunteer. We got two volunteers. We've so if got you a want couple live demo. So if you want to do a live demo. Oh, yeah. Okay. So while she's taking care of that, let's talk to <laughs> Thank Ty. Thank you, Nina. Right? Let's talk to Ty about hardware hacking. So, first of all, tell us about what it is and what you did this year. Uh, hardware hacking, we've been around uh, nine years this year, so it's been a long time wow. going. Awesome. Uh, lost uh, 10 years ago, ran around the conference trying to get people to get into hardware. There's a lot of software people here at the village uh, and the conference, and hardware is the foundation of that. So understanding how hardware works and being able to manip manipulate that makes it so that you can actually do the software better. Uh, he, so he ran around the conference trying to get people to assemble robots, and they sat down in the middle of a contest floor and assembled robots. Um, so the next year they gave him some actual space with some hardware. We got uh, solder irons and lamps and all kinds of tools to do soldering and desoldering. Um, and the general idea is we provide a platform for people to come into the village or, and bring whatever they bring. Uh, there's lots of contests now that have badges that need assembly um, or parts that are fixed. We, have, we repair a lot of things for people that get broken. I've seen a number of phones. Um, that come through. People are like, hey, my thumb drive broke. We really need it to work for our demo. Well, I have a really serious question. So some guy comes to you in DEF CON with a thumb drive and says, can you help me repair this? Yes. <laughs> it's amazing, huh? 
No yes. questions. No <laughs> questions asked. And then you test it by putting it in your computer. No, they I test have it a on their machine. I need your help yes. with. Hang on. Yes. <laughs> so we've been doing this for a long time. Um, we, uh, when we first started, we did a lot of teaching. Uh, of people trying to teach people how to solder. We still do a lot of that. We're trying to get grow that beyond that. Um, this year we had a lot of people who brought badges that had been, they had attempted to solder their first time and, <laughs> and um, didn't do the best job, had some problems either in putting pieces in the wrong place or um, components that had broken. So we're trying to figure out how to help people to take that to the mm. next level over the years to, to be able to troubleshoot and repair. The challenge with that is it's, that's a skill you gain over time yeah. and experience. So. so does someone have to have experience to come to the village or are you actually training people? We're actually training on spot. So that's awesome. you can show up. The hardest thing is bring something to solder with. Right. Uh, we have, again, we have equipment. There's a number of different places that sell different kinds of kits. We've been trying to get uh, a vendor to supply more than 50. Mm -hmm. DEF CON supplied 50 little jack buttons this year. It was fantastic. That they sold out very quickly, but they were good that people were selling them. Uh, so we're just bring something to solder, and we can, we've been teaching people as young as five to oh, that's, solder. That's phenomenal. And that is dangerous. It is dangerous, but how awesome. What a, what a skill for a young person to, to grow up with. Absolutely. I didn't learn that until I was much older, and I still stink at desoldering things. Desoldering is a lot harder. Yeah, I tend to burn my boards up and stuff. I should come to your village and get a training <laughs> session. Where are you located? This year we were out on the contest floor, so this is our okay. first year. We were right out amongst everybody else. So how was that noise level and all of that? When noise level was a lot different. It was a lot yeah. harder to talk to people. Yeah. Um, we had CTF b banging in the background. And, wow, and uh, they're loud. Hacker Jeopardy yeah. <laughs> and, and a number of the other contests oh, going sorry. on. So it, we had a great time. Um, other than the, the level, noise level, we had a great time. Yeah. Uh, helped people come and go a lot. Um, soldering creates a lot of heat. And uh -huh. so it was nice to have a big space to dissipate that heat into. In your space, was the air conditioning working or was it It like was here? working the whole time. Oh, that's wonderful. Fantastic. Those of you that were in here, it was like a sauna sometimes, right? It was ridiculous. And the steam was the, the body moisture. It was pretty gross. Yeah. <laughs> Just want to say. Yeah. 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 So contest, so next year you'll be back again, so we'll make 10 years? This will be 10 years. We're going to try to do something really big next year. So will next year be 10 or will ne next, next year, year will be 10. 10? So 10 year anniversary is a huge yeah, deal. Yeah, it's a huge deal. So you have to throw like some kind of... We're, we're in the works already. Awesome. So uh, besides the soldering and things like that, like what's the goal? What do people learn with hardware hacking? Uh, the biggest goal is to make them understand that everything works on hardware, and hardware is just about as easy to work with as software. There's a, there's a different set of rules and a different set of tools that you need, but it's not, it's not any more complicated. Mm. Uh, you learn a hand set of rules. Um, you know, don't burn yourself, number one. <laughs> don't light anything on fire with a solder iron. That's number two. I've done that. Um, so with that, you start with some simple projects that are available all over online. Uh, there's a number of vendors that provide kits that are pre-manufactured to just have to assemble. Mm. Um, and then you start learning about how electronics works, and you can start making devices that do the thing you want to do. That's really cool. I've, yeah. I've been concerned this year my phone is old enough to uh, be aging out with a 2G death. So um, I haven't found a phone that I've liked, uh, but I've finally found a, a modem that works with Arduino. So I've been working on designing my own phone so I know exactly what my phone will do uh, because I programmed it and I manufactured it. Wow, that's a little crazy. That would be your 10-year project, teach me how to make their own phone. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Very interesting. Any questions on the, for, from the audience on the hardware village? Hardware hacking village? Yes. What was the coolest thing someone made this year? What was the coolest thing someone made this year? Um, there was a lot of Darknet badges going around. Um, I didn't get a chance to circulate as much as I have. We were trying to work on, um, with the rest of you, we get the badges at the same time. So we, we spend some time trying to help mm. people reverse engineer the badge, get it to a point where they can flash. Uh, I'm not sure if all of you have heard about the different problems we had with disseminating badges with the conference, um, but a lot of them got badges that were blank. So we spent a lot of time oh. trying to figure out how to get a dev system up and going um, to be able to flash that. This year they were a little more challenging with using JTAG and no connectors mm -hmm. for the outside. So uh, we spent a lot of time in that. I, I spent most of my time working that type of a situation. We didn't get to look at too many things. But there always is, uh, there's a, the, one of the most interesting pieces of the, the Hardware Hacking Village is the source pile. Uh, people, it's a very organic thing. We have some tables that get set out. We initially put some things on it, yeah. and throughout the conference, things come and go. Uh, we had everything from SCSI Terminators to uh, 
parts of screens and mm. all kinds of different devices come and go. Sounds like a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. So we'll look forward to seeing what you come up with next year. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so is there going to be <clears throat> live needles anytime? I think he's still sleeping. I'm doing it when he comes in. Oh, boy. Okay, so let's talk about some social engineering while I can still talk and not, not get faint out of, oh, it just makes me so weak. Needles are not my strong suit. I can never be a phlebotomist. I can't wait for this. I can wait for I'm it. I'm so excited. So, um, actually, now talking to... Can I pause you really quick? Yes. Can you do what? I'm going to go get him. Okay. I'll be right back. Yeah. In, like, five minutes. Take all the time in the world. <laughs> Take an hour. That's Please hold. Fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, we had a... This year, we had a, a really interesting kids event, and I was just thinking, where's Amanda? We should, we should do something with the hardware hacking village next year. That would be kind of cool to tie it in. We had this kids event <clears throat> this year where... Uh, because it was Rise of the Machines, we wanted to uh, tie in robotics with it, but um, we really have no skill here to teach anyone how to solder or build anything. You should stop by. We should. So we found a... Um, do you have one of them handy? Uh, no? Oh, they're all packed? <laughs> we packed, packed. everything last I just, night. It's a simple question. <laughs> if the answer is no, it's no, Jim. Don't take an aggressive body language. Did you see just Amanda's answer. face? Did you see the stress? The answer that you is caused? no. I don't need it. That's fine. You know, <laughs> if, just disappoint everyone in the podcast. That's perfect. That's perfectly fine, Jim. I don't need anything. By a company called Little Bits. The Little Bits. Okay, so it's a company called Little Bits, and they make um, robots that you don't need to solder. They actually use uh, the the breadboard, and uh, things connect like Legos um, to it. And it was really interesting. We thought we'd give it a try. So the, uh, the kids had to solve ciphers and puzzles and critical thinking exercises. And every time they did one, they got a piece of the robot. And then they had, to, um, they had to put it together at the end. And then we had an obstacle course in the hallway back here. And they had to race them in the obstacle course. And it went really well, except for a couple of the kids that had me mental breakdowns. There was a few... There was a few mental breakdowns, I guess, from what I heard, and some fist fights. But besides that... Making I mean, kids cry you know, is what we do. It's yeah. what we take the most joy in, I actually. Think, I, think, I think that should be the motto for us. Social engineer, social engineer Village, making children cry since 2009. Security through children's tears. Security Ooh. through children's tears. Yeah, we collect those. Wow. So here's Hannah, okay? Hannah is the nicest person... <laughs> Her nickname is like Tigger because she bounces around the room as Has the most the positive. Face. She smiles nonstop. She always says, "Ma'am" and "Sir." She's the and then she comes out with that security through children's tears. We'll make the T-shirt for next year. I Hannah. think that should be the SECTF <laughs> theme for next year: is security through tears. I like it. Yeah, I like it. But it would be cool to tie something in. Definitely. You know, to like kind of have them have to come and solder something together effectively. And let's work with Biohack and inject the children. Oh. We could microchip them, oh. you know, and then track them, just oh. like we do pets. Yeah. Yeah. See, oh. lots of good ideas being generated here. No, it's not after good night ideas. Of We're not injecting children with technology. <laughs> Come on. It's, this is so weird. It's cutting edge. Why would you want technology in your body? We're setting trends. It's not a trend. We're making kids cry then. Okay. We'll settle on that. Yeah, you show them that needle and they'll be crying. Yeah, I'm serious. We might as well take the kids, line them up, and hit them with a bag of oranges multiple times. Then inject them. No! Don't! What is wrong with you? Lots of things. What is wrong with you? We don't hit children with oranges, then inject them. You're the them. one that talked about beating children I with oranges. I was just trying to you make you stop talking that. about needles. That's I was just I... talking about making them cry. Yeah, no, you weren't. <laughs> what, what did you channel the spirit of Dave? No, he drank too much last night. He can't keep up with me this that morning. That is not true. <laughs> Definitely not true. He's like, you channeled your inner Dave. I'm possessed. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? That's just the way it Make their injections tamper proof. So, great. Things will never be the same. That's just the way it is. How come you couldn't sing like this when I sent you on that gig? That's, That's actually good. That's just the way it is. Blah blah blah. I don't know the rest of the words. Wow. I think she drank too much last night. I, think I did, she did have a too. tiny sip. She had a tiny sip. That's too much. It's way too much, obviously. <laughs> 
She's singing. I you slept know, like you, three hours. Do you know this is going on the DEF CON video? Oh my God. <laughs> I was so glad that she did not know that. Nobody that. told me that this was taping. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about that. I am happy. <laughs> Banana. <laughs> Everybody knows the story behind that one. Uh, no, I don't think everyone knows it. I'm, I'm really sorry, hardware yeah, hacking guy. That's we're, cool. we're just totally taken over from you. Yeah, we're, just, <laughs> we're quiet in there. <laughs> yeah, it's just really crazy. But it would be lovely to partner with you next year for the kids. <laughs> Absolutely. See that's, how I just transitioned right into something that yeah, sounded kind of professional? Can, can, we, can, we, can we mix in biohacking, hardware hacking, and Tampa Village with the kids? So we wrap the kids in a tamper proof box that they have to get out of. Once they get out, they have to inject themselves with a RFID. They have to inject themselves okay. with an RFID. Oh, no, I have a better. They have to inject each other Ooh. with RFID devices. And then we beat them with a bag of oranges. No, no, not yet. Oh. Then they have to go to hardware hacking and solder something to the device nice. that they just injected themselves. And then we beat them with a bag of oranges. Yes. For fun. That is While our they kids' solve CTF ciphers. next year. All they solve ciphers. I, I think like it's it. the best plan ever. Look at Micah's face. He's so there. He's, Man, he's playing like, next year. Please make it older You're than 12. You're contestant number one, aren't yeah. you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. See? <laughs> see? He's down. That kid's down for everything, though. He's awesome. So, <laughs> so Thursday, we ran the, um, the Mission SE Impossible here. <laughs> and uh, last, I don't know if anyone saw it last year. It was, it was like a, a, a piece of wood with a lock in it, and you know, and uh, we had a bunch of laser beams that were way too powerful for humans to pass through, like Mr. burning people's eyes yeah, out. Yeah, like Mr. X built it, and he used like forty megawatt lasers. You know, it was like Star Wars, and uh, and and then we had some other stuff. We had some handcuffs. Well, this year we hired a guy who loves to do. He loves. He's like a maker at heart, and we said. Brian, here's my vision. Make it. And he did. <laughs> and it sits in this little pelican case, which um, he took an old ammo box and he put three locks in them and Arduinos and pies and all this stuff. And it was really, really cool. But um, we had a rule that if you're competing, you can choose one lifeline. But l last year when we did it, we said, and you can have a lifeline, people would be stuck on stage and they would look out at the audience and say, who can help me? And nobody would help them. Crickets. They would all laugh. Yeah. And I'd be like, ha ha, loser. So this year we said, let's make, you have to pick your lifeline ahead of time. So you have to say, you know, you, or can you be my lifeline? And that way, if you called, that person knew that they were running up on stage. So it just so happened that um, one of the guys picked this young man right here, Micah, to be the lifeline. And he literally walked up on stage, touched a lock. I mean, I'm not even kidding. He put the thing and he went, and the lock was open. So after that, every person used Micah for, <laughs> for their lifeline. It the just whole spread. audience was like, ooh. Yeah. Oh, oh, Nina's back. I Nina's back. I don't see a needle, so I am happy, 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 happy. We're watching no. her walk up the aisle. <laughs> oh, 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 she's taking the mic. I couldn't find him. But I did talk to him, so he's coming. Oh. <laughs> okay, so continue your story about Micah, because he's awesome. I can't remember. Something about needles. No, no, no. Micah touched oh. the lock oh, and Michael it opened. Micah touched the lock and it opened. And then, and then okay. it was his dad's turn to compete. And he calls his son up to crawl through the nasty floor under the lasers. That's how he used this kid, right? <laughs> totally said, yeah, yeah, kid, you crawl on the floor under the lasers. And, um, and then he won. So good job, man. Nice job on that. You were the winner for the Mission SC Impossible. And happily, it was the first year DEF CON asked us to submit the results to them for that. So uh, I don't know what that means, but you'll be like on the board for you know, that competition. It became a legit competition this year. For all posterity, Lane. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. You'll be known as the guy who let his kid crawl on a DEF CON floor. <laughs> He's got so much DNA on him right now that we can probably clone the human race off of that kid's face. Do you want to? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I love this girl. She's awesome. No. I don't. We can do that and then create faces out of this. You want to do it? Okay, look, can we have to peel his face off first? No, no, no. Oh. We can just take the DNA and create the faces that he, <laughs> whatever happened on these carpets. So there is a face-off machine. Ugh. Kind of. Weird. Awesome. 
No, I don't think if we should look, do experiments with children. I really no, don't. No, just the DNA. <laughs> you, 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 you were really missed that's, when that's you were... That's a great idea. I might swab the carpets before I leave. You, you, you were really missed when you left. <laughs> Michelle came up with a new kids competition next year about locking children in a tamper-proof box and then having to inject them with RFID chips and then solder things to themselves. Actually, that was your idea. No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, security escort her out of the room. Uh, <laughs> How dare you remember things properly? Uh, okay, that was Thursday. Thursday was a good day. It was fun. I don't remember Thursday. I remember Thursday. <laughs> Thursday was fun. Thursday was fun. Um, we had, how many, Amanda, where's Amanda? How many people signed up? 120 people signed up. We don't do it online, we do it like here, and then we drew out of a hat 10 people. Hey, and Amal, hi, come. Oh no. <laughs> it's the needle man. Someone the needle man is here. I don't I don't I don't like you. I am. So I think the uh, hardware hacking village is going to take the opportunity to step out and start packing. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Guys, nice. hardware Everybody hacking. Give hardware hacking hands. See you Ty. So, I just have a caveat. He actually has to be upstairs in 20 minutes. So we got 20 minutes to do this. Well, how much you, did you have to drink last night? Well, it's, it's how long did I sleep after I stopped drinking? So enough time. Enough time? Did you drink this morning? No. Okay, we're on. <laughs> Who drinks in the morning? <laughs> Besides Show alcohol. Hands? <laughs> Why do you think I raised my hand? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess that was the wrong question for DEF CON. I was... We're going to swap chairs. Why? I'm not getting it done. I'm doing it. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, you can swap chairs all you want, as long as Needle Boy stays over there. I'm Michelle. Uh, which, which hand do you have? Michelle, okay. Amal, Amal. If Needle Boy comes any closer... <laughs> well, I might have to. <laughs> um, okay, so needle Boy. You That's realize his he has needles box. too, right? Uh, unless you want to do back hand, then it'd be... Which would be better for Dama? I'm a very strong right hand. What hand do you reach for the door with? Nina. I reach for everything with my right hand. <laughs> okay, so throats, doors, what? Yes, throats, crotch, you know. Sorry, this is PG-13. All right, cool. Uh, I'm going to swap the spots. Okay. TSA, one C care. The uh, so yeah, that's a, it's maybe a whole that's a good story, question. right? TSA. That's a good question from Lance. Is will TSA see these and will they care? Uh, no, the TSA does not see the metal detectors, the scanners, the millimeter wave radar. Uh, I have four implants right now, and and they don't care. It doesn't show up. No. So. so. No, no, I'm feeling. You a do little, look a little queasy. Yeah, yeah, Chris. yeah. I'm feeling a little. I'm feeling. A little, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. If I, if I <laughs> shut up, Silvers, I can make you not make win sure right now. Make sure that show okay. the needle <laughs> so that you're going the to use. Oh. So I'm going to do uh, clear your hands off. I'm going to lay a field down and take your hand off. It's actually, it's, it's not as big as everybody thinks it is. No, you're not getting it's injected. It's just a little needle, Chris. No. <laughs> well, yeah, it's so little. He has to pull out a freaking blood blanket, <laughs> you know, for the potential flesh wound that's about to occur. What are we doing in the SE village? What is happening? Making We're, history, doing awesome stuff. These people are here to talk about See, social this engineering. Is, this is biohacking, guys. I know. But why, do, why do we have this idea, Michelle, and invite people? Why? Oh, because I'm it's feeling. awesome. Maybe we should have talked about what I was going to talk about. No, I think here. it's better to be unplanned because... <laughs> if you guys all want to come up and take pictures, I'm totally cool with it because this is something neat that you're not going to see very often. Yeah, you, yeah no, you, I'm going to go sit with her. I'm going to go <laughs> hold your microphone. <laughs> I'm going to hold your microphone. Don't do it, run. You can actually narrate what's going on here. Yeah, you can narrate. Here, let me narrate. A needle came out. Chris puked. <laughs> Um, Chris has passed out. People are now undressing Chris. Uh, Someone have 911 written on the, uh, in case Chris, in case Chris. Chris is getting implanted in his butt <laughs> with an RFID chip. But if you do that, imagine, is this on? Can you hear me? Oh, you he's, can. He's putting So if you do on. get your implant in your butt, you're going to have to dance every time you go to work to get the door to open. <laughs> yeah. That would be so worth it. No, it Even on your bad days, it's just never going to be a bad day just watching you try. <laughs> uh, 
So this is chlorhexidine. It's uh, alcohol and um, chlorhexidine. It's alcohol and molecule. death is what and it death. is. A little bit of death. For death for bugs, that's for sure. Death Bacteria, for bugs. Bacteria, viruses, that kind of oh. What are we doing here? <laughs> this is like a once-in-a-lifetime yeah. opportunity, but, man. But it's going to be Chris, all over social you. media. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's me. <laughs> Hang on, let the short one through. She's so tiny and small and cute. <laughs> hey, Ashley, hey. <laughs> Yes, so this is ISO 1443A and NFC Type 2 compliant. So what exactly are we what, what exactly are we implanting in my body? Don't you think you want to know that first? <laughs> no. Well, we'll tell you after. I jump and then I ask. Oh, for the love of God. It's like when you parachute, right? You just go. No. Why, do you think I'm going to struggle and scream? No, it's just the angle. Don't jump. Oh, yeah. Nina, can you, I mean, all, in all seriousness, can you describe, like, what is yeah, going into describe, her body? What is it? Describe what's happening. Okay, so, well, I've just uh, applied chlorhexidine, and that takes about 60 seconds to take effect. Um, during that time, I tell you that when we do the uh, in installation, then uh, you're going to need to uh, keep the bandage on, you know, keep good pressure for 5, 10 minutes until it stops bleeding. Then uh, keep the bandage on for an hour or two if you can. If it comes off before, then that's okay. Um, because it's, it's not bleeding, you just let it air dry, a little scab will form, and then that's the end of your um, risk for infection. So um, for about two weeks, your body's going to encapsulate it in fibrous tissue, and during that period of time, oh, it might have a little bit of uh, uh, itching. Yeah, I'm going to document this on Twitter. Yeah. Oh, God. It might have some itching or whatever. That's okay. You can itch it, but, uh, but don't press it or push it or try to move it around oh, under the skin. Shut up. Um, <laughs> don't do like what I was doing. R right, right, don't exactly. Like for two, for two weeks. Okay. Oh, man, uh, I actually feel After 30 days, and you can do whatever you want, jujitsu, oh. grabbing crotches, yeah, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Four to five hours after installation, you can go to the pool that kind of thing. Uh, if you ever need to have it removed, we don't, we don't put any perylene coating on it, so you go to the doctor, get a glove put on, and then you push your finger down on the bottom side. When you do that, you can see it pop up, okay. and then they'll make an incision, and it'll come out. So, pretty straightforward. I can shower, wash, hands, do Yes, yes, by tonight you can do that. Please let her shower. So. <laughs> yeah, that would be good for everybody, actually. Start smelling like a farm animal. <laughs> like the past, past weekend, you said. Oh, you said wild animal. Don't look okay. How big is that needle? I can't. It's like uh, the needle's eleven gauge. I stared at the whole thing. The needle's what? Eleven gauge. Eleven gauge. Okay, do you want to? Just take a breath in. And out. And here we go. Oh, mother of all mothers and things that are bad. Oh, my Lord. Don't jiggle it in and out, dude. What the heck is wrong with you? That's it. Is that it? That's it. Oh, God. Oh, okay, man, I'm passing out. I am slowly passing out. Did you see it, Chris? Slowly passing out. I am not doing well. So. <laughs> That's it. That was it. Tell us, tell us what I can do. So, so now you can speak uh, ISO 1443A and NFC Type 2. Uh, you can talk to machines. And well. essentially, you have a tag that has oh, um, 888 bytes of user programmable memory. It has a 7-byte UID. And you can have, there's some other features in there, password protection. Uh, you can run the dangerous uh, NFC app from oh. Android, and that will do some protections and set the password. Um, but yeah, like my, my, mine has a uh, V-card in it for my business card. Uh, you can put a Rickroll yeah. video in there if you want. You know, whatever. <laughs> Or Bruce Hornsby track. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Bruce Hornsby. Absolutely. Yeah. You're fired. So, my favorite application, honestly, is just the door lock. Like, uh, getting rid of my keys, so I start my car, motorcycle, get in the house, that kind of thing. Yeah. So take your finger and put it, put it here. I think. Hold the pressure. So what do I use spinning. to program it? You can use any NFC phone to program data onto it, but in the lock scenarios, um, it's just going to read the UID, so you don't need to program anything. You just tell the lock, um, no, I'm, no, I'm okay. adding a new tag that to your horrible. inventory, and uh, then you scan it, and it's in there. Thank you. Okay. I don't think I'm doing really well. <laughs> I think I'm doing very well. Wow. That was like, hey, really? That was cake. It was really, no, I wouldn't say painless, but simple. Okay. I got them both done within, what, 18 hours Just apart? Hold for five minutes. I was no, writing, I was doing everything. Oh, no, like things are actually spinning. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Princess. Thank you, Nina. <laughs> Put your hand out, Prince. Put your hand out. 
Chris is next. I can't. <laughs> if you come near me, I will so try to stab you. Oh, cyborg can't fit. He's going to point towards yourself. You can't even do the knife. You're going to stab yourself again. You suffer so much more. Now I'm going upstairs to do more stabbies. So, yep. Bye, Hacking Village. I'll be there for until I run out. So. How many more do you have? Oh, God. Okay. Really? You want to say that? It's a line of safety. So, I want to do it. so really quick, there's about 10 kids left, and there are people upstairs waiting. Just fly. So if you're going, go now. <laughs> Everybody give a hand to Nina and her partner. Thank you so much. I can't even clap. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. Oh, what has happened to this podcast? This is like the worst podcast yeah, ever. Yeah, it's right now. I'm going to slap that next to you. You good? No. You need a hug? No. <laughs> Just, I'm really going to puke on you. I'm going to vomit on you. So while you do that, I'm going to do like another really quick plug for biohacking. While so, I vomit, I'm going to do a quick <laughs> plug. I'm going to talk about genetics, and if you do vomit, I will take a sample. <laughs> What is wrong with you, woman? She's awesome. How interesting is this topic? I not, love what I do. It's not interesting. I'll just have a fa- your face. So, no. FYI, so if, the reason I said that is because there's from puke. yeah, because there's actually a woman. Her name is Heather Haggerty Dewey. She walked around New York City, um, picking up garbage. So I don't chew a lot of gum and I don't smoke, but people that do just toss it on the floor. She would pick it up, walk around, pick it up, sequence the DNA, and make masks out of their faces. So you can walk into her gallery and see yourself. It's that, it's that serious. That is so disturbing. So I really try hard not to touch anything. And even when I go places, I'll wipe it down, like knock my hair out or whatever else is going on. When I go to the ATM, I do one of these so no fingerprints are left behind. I have tons of information, but I have to go upstairs, so my apologies. But um, yeah, check it out. We've got like an hour left. Okay, I gotta yeah, go. Seriously, thank you for coming. Yeah, yeah sure. It was really, yeah. Interesting. really interesting. I'll keep you updated on my progress. Awesome. Uh, does she have, need a special device to program it? No, you can use your phone. Really? Yeah. Is there an app to do it? Um, it's, I think it's called Dangerous App. I'll text you. Dangerous <laughs> App. It's called Dangerous I'll App. I love Dangerous App Don't on my phone. Super creative. Don't you think um, you should have asked all of this before? He actually did? said it. So if you, oh, when you tweet listen. it out, mm-hmm. I'll just reply to you. Okay. Because this is how we communicate. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Nina. Thanks, Nina. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I now feel superior. <laughs> we are Borg. We are Borg. I'm not touching you. You look terrible. I do. I feel terrible. It's my weakness is needles. So for Dave, it's clowns, and for you, it's needles. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for telling the world. <laughs> so let's talk about the rest of the weekend, shall we? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so there was some SE stuff. <laughs> and there was lines, and then there was needles. And that was about it. Ah, stop, seriously. <laughs> okay, okay. What is I'm wrong sorry. with you? Yeah, Why? Did you, I, you, thought, <laughs> you actually said nice things about me, and now you're treating me so badly. I'm just teasing. <sighs> okay, so Friday and Saturday, yeah. we had our, our flagship contest, the SECTF. We had 14 contestants and 14 target companies, and a set of informational flags that we asked our contestants to try and obtain using pretexts that were... Um, let's see, non-threatening, non-sexual, you know, to, to try to get information out by being nice people. And we had some awesome contestants, both ladies and men, um, and it was pretty clear, though, after a couple calls on Saturday, who was going to be the master and mistress of the universe. It did, it did become evidently clear. And um, I think we should just mention, and not to pick on any one person, but there was a lot of questions that came up afterward about how we determine if a pretext is um, manipulative. So our rule of thumb on that is if it induces fear in the target or anger in the target, then we consider that a manipulative pretext, right? So our motto in our company is that you can do all of these things and leaving people feeling better for having met you. 
anyone can learn how to use manipulation. I mean, anyone can do it, and it's easy, and it works every time. But it takes skill to learn how to do the same job and do it with influence as opposed to manipulation. So we want that to be part of the competition too. So if we hear something that, you know, where people, feel that we, it sounds like they're very afraid while they're talking to the contestant, um, and some of you were in the room that did happen, we, we cut the call. Now, sometimes we feel like we should just cut the call, but in certain cases, cutting the call would actually damage the target more. So we tell the contestant to fix it, right? We tell them, stop what you're doing, <laughs> tell them everything's okay, and then end the call politely. Um, and that happened this weekend once. Um, so, you know, we really, really take it seriously. We don't want anyone feeling. And then we even made the contestant call the guy back. Um, <laughs> yes, we did. You know, we made him call him back and say <laughs> that it was just a mistake and everything was fine. Uh, you know, th this, this competition is not supposed to be about, um, you know, proving that Joe could be manipulated or Sarah could give up information. It's to show that social engineering is a very valid vector and it works across the board. So we don't want it to ever be making fun of um, other folks, you know. And when DEF CON asked us, DEF CON 17, when they asked us to make an SE competition, the reason that they asked us to do it was because the present SE competition was doing just that. You know, people were getting on stage and they were making calls to like college girls and getting them to give their credit card numbers live, you know, right in the middle of DEF CON. I remember hearing that, I was there for that. Um, and, and it just is not good, you know? I mean, it's not, it's not positive and it doesn't really educate and it's just something you can point and laugh. So, we, you know, we wanted it to be an educational event that we can learn from. So um, hopefully that answers that. If there's other questions on that, because I know we got quite a few after that call. Uh, if anyone has any questions on that, we can talk about it more or answer. Okay, but now let's move to the more positive side. So <clears throat> it was really clear who was gonna win after his call. It was really clear. I mean, and without mentioning too many details about the call, let me just tell you a little detail about the, the scoring, which I have here. <clears throat> For any of you that have been here multiple years, you'll know this is the first time we ever did this, like actually talk about the scoring right after. Usually we make you wait for the report and the announcement, so we're changing some things. But um, our winner, again, um, taking a monstrous lead, Chris Silvers, by the way. Chris. Yay, Chris. So the breakdown was Chris actually had the highest score for reporting. One of the one, highest score for this time, but one of the highest we've ever seen. It was 218 points for the reporting. Now that is basically every flag that a person can get on the report. Uh, minus one. Yeah, minus one that he couldn't get. Um, so every flag that you can get, because there's flags you can't get on the report, like you know, go to a fake URL because they're not allowed to communicate. So there's certain flags they can't get. So 218 represents that he found literally every flag online somewhere, which is pretty scary. And then uh, the call score was 924 points during three calls. Yeah, so a total of three calls, <clears throat> 924 points. That is ridiculous. Insane. All right, and, and uh, I, I, just to, to tell you how the pretext went, because I, I thought this was really a genius plan. Um, we teach something that's called our, using artificial time constraints. So if you tell people, like, I have a 15-minute survey, can you talk to me? They go, I really don't have time. Right? So, but if you say, look, I got five questions I need to ask you. It'll take maybe two minutes. Can, you know, can you do that? Uh, most people say yes, and that's what he did. He said, I got five questions for a survey uh, that we're doing for employees about their work environment. Can you take time for that? And, there, and everybody talked to, yes, yeah, sure, I could do that. And then at the end of the five questions, because they were all like non-serious, like how, how long do you work for the company? You know, what are your pay dates? Uh, what, do you have normal break times? You know, things that would, wouldn't be too serious. Then um, he said, look, for your help today, uh, we want to we wanna gift you a reward card. So can you go to this URL? And he sent them to a dead URL, which we approved ahead of time, right? So we knew it was 404. There was nothing on the page. And, um, and the, 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 the target went to the URL and said, it's not working, right? All I get is a message saying the page doesn't exist. And he goes, oh, man, maybe there's a problem with your computer. 
<laughs> and at that point is when, instead of the five questions, turns into every flag. Can I check your browser and your version? Can I check your operating system and your service pack? Can I check your PDF reader because that may affect a website? Um, <laughs> can, can you tell me about your VPN? Maybe it's your VPN. Oh, let's check your antivirus. I mean, he literally went through every single thing. And by the way, do you have a cafeteria? Yeah. It was ridiculous. As he's talking, it's like, oh, so do you get a chance to use the cafeteria there, you know, when you're on your breaks? They're like, oh, no, we don't have one. Oh, that's too bad. So what <laughs> operating system do you use? It was like totally stupid, you know? I mean, I, I was like sitting there going, why is she answering these questions, you know? And, and it just worked flawlessly because, again, he started with that artificial time constraint. It's a beautifully done job. And at the end, the contestants or the targets felt good. They didn't feel manipulated. They didn't feel... Um, damaged, scared. scared. They helped take a survey and there was absolutely no reason for them to worry about their job or their weekends. So I, I think, I mean, we're not going to say we're going to do this, but I really want to add like bonus points next year for, for quality pretexts. You just said that, that though, right? You yeah, said you weren't going to say it and then you said, well, okay. No, I said, I said <laughs> what I meant. Okay. So here's what happens. I, I, I think while I talk. You, you talk to think. I talk to think. And that means I'm thinking about doing that. And now I said it, so we're going to do it. Okay. So it must be so done. So next year we're going to add bonus points for quality pretext because I think that will also encourage contestants to not think of manipulative pretext but to think of influential pretexts. But you know what was also cool <clears throat> is that in past years, pretexts like student and survey haven't been that successful. And this year we found both of those used extremely well. And I think it was kind of how the contestants tended to frame things and yeah. set up the situations. And really, they got really nice results. Really nice results. And then um, our, second, our second place winner is uh, Rachel Toback. Right here. Hey, Rachel. So before we go through all of her score and stuff, the interesting, um, the interesting thing about Rachel is that up to, up to a year ago, she didn't even know what social engineering was. Um, then she came to DEF CON last year, right, uh, with, her, with her husband and uh, heard about social engineering and said, ah, maybe I should give this thing a try. Signed up, made a unbelievably psychotic video. I, I mean, it was. If you guys were here for it, it was really scary. If not, I should I should play it again for you later. It was, yeah. I don't I don't I don't I don't have out to there. And if I say that to Evan now, he may cry. So we we won't um, we won't do it. He would just give me the stink eye. But it's a really psychotic video. We actually should play it at some point because it's it's that psychotic. Um, I mean, Michelle's head is floating around the video at points. My face is on the video. Kevin Mitnick blows up on a train. Um, she's in a bed with a bat screaming uh, like she crawls across the table. I, I, it's really, I don't, there's a guy who smashes milk jugs on his head. I, there's like so many things that happen in, in 90 seconds. I, I, I think she really, we were scared of her. Laughing and terrified at the same yes, time. Yes, we were like, <laughs> that was sort of, <laughs> oh please pick her. She may come to my house and kill me if we don't. So, um, she got in the booth with uh, zero experience and her report score. Now, remember, I said that Chris's was the, one of the highest we've ever seen at 218. Her report score was 190. So having never done an OSINT before and not ever doing social engineering, she located 190 indicates about 70, 75% of all flags, right? 70 to 75% of all flags that one can find she found on her target. So that's pretty impressive, if you ask me. And then her call score was 864. So not even a 100-point difference in between Chris and Rachel on the call score, which is really, really impressive. Now, again, one, what a beautiful pretext this was is that uh, she was a fellow employee traveling to uh, the branch that she was calling and needed to get information on the location. So when she came... Um, that, that she can you know, make sure that her computer was set up and she knew what the facilities were like so she was prepared for it. And, um, and the, the best part was she went through the list of things. I mean, she asked all sorts of stuff, you know, like all sorts of, I want to set up my Wi-Fi, I want to do this, you know, what kind of computer do you use? I have this, do you use that? And a lot of, um, uh, I want to say it was like deliberate false statement because she would do things like, so I have this old MacBook Pro, is that what you have? And she would go, no, no, I have like a think pattern. And then she did this nuts thing where after she hung up, she called the woman back <laughs> and she goes, look, I gotta ask you this really serious question. My parents are super, um, 
yeah, super crazy, <laughs> which I was like, yeah, that makes sense, okay? Um, and, and I got bit by bed bugs once. <laughs> so so I need to know who does your pest control, right, in the facility so I could check on them and make sure they spray for bed bugs. And the woman was like, oh, that's terrible. Here's the name, blah, right? And I also have like every food allergy under the sun. Can you tell me who does your cafeteria food so I can look them up and make sure they have vegan and gluten, you know, menus and they should, blah, blah. Just like, and she went through this like weird list of, it, like she's like you know she's obviously has crazy parents hates to travel can't eat real food is afraid of bugs you know wants to know oh and my parents are super worried about my my safety what security guards have you hired uh, to be on the facility and what company I want to look into them to make sure they're good I mean it was like the most ridiculous question the lady just kept answering just kept answering yes she went out to check for the security company. That's right. that's right. Yeah, so uh, that's, a good, that's a good memory. The woman actually left her desk, went outside to go check who were the security guards worked for, and came back in to tell her. I mean, you know, this is the kind of stuff. When you build a positive pretext that is rapport building, then this is the kind of effect you have, is that people will go out of their way for you. You know, it was really phenomenal to see. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, so that's, so the, the, the comment was about um, how much she appreciated the URL being, being mine. And you were the one that said you had to take the training? Yeah, okay. I thought this was really nuts, right? I don't think we've ever seen this before. No, no it was really used. good. She goes, I have to take some security awareness training. My boss told me I have to do it. And I need to make sure the website works when I come to, to your facility. Can you check it for me? And the woman goes, I think it will work, but yeah, okay, I'll make sure for you. I don't want you to be worried about it. And then she typed it in, and on top it says, security through education. And she goes, oh, there's a video here. And she starts playing. You can hear the music, my music in the background for the video, you know? And, uh, and, and she's like, oh yeah, it works. It loads, everything runs. And Rachel's like, oh, that's good, thank you. So there was no fear for her because when she went, even though there's a big human head on the top and it says social engineering, DEF CON competition, you no know, huge banner, she's like, oh, no, your, your, your education will work when you're here next week. It was like, what is happening? <laughs> this is a person who knows nothing about social engineering. And she's like, and, and then the next score, um, the next score below her is 875. So almost a 200 point difference. Right, so nobody was even close between that. So really impressive, um, the pretext and things like that, I thought. So questions on, uh, on that, on the, on the events? Anyone had any? Okay, so. Let's talk about schedule. Let's talk about the schedule. Yeah. Which schedule? For next year. Oh. When we're doing all of this all over again. Okay. Oh, the schedule good for point. today. So, um, you know, we have the podcast. There's not, we, we always debate we're doing other things, but here's what happens. They move the, the ceremony time up. I think it's four. I think, I think four, four thirty. Um, so <clears throat> it's two. A oh, four? Oh, I'm sorry, you held your, I only saw two fingers. It's four p.m. Four p.m. So, four p.m., um, you know, uh, time for the cer closing ceremonies. That gives us, Let's say from noon to four, only four hours to pack everything, get things shipped, get things to Billy's house. So it's, it's not something that um, we really have the time. So for today, for us, we, we kind of do this. And then we, you know, people can stay in the room and chat. We do, um, you know, we, 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 we talk, but we pack up. And then we do closing ceremonies. And then we go away. And we go home. And we, we cleanse our livers and our souls and uh, sleep for a week. That's actually a total lie. I will be working Tuesday morning. Um, and then next year, we start planning. We actually start planning next year right away. But you know what? Before we move on to that, Amanda Berlin's here. What? From DEF CON Photography, and we told her that... Amanda, come on up. Hey, girl. Hey, girl, hey. <laughs> she doesn't even say hey back. She hates you. I'm so tired. <laughs> How you doing? Good. Good morning. So how was uh, DEF CON, this is your first year doing this, right? Doing? Yeah. No, yes. photo yeah, the photography for DEF CON? Yeah. Yeah. So how did it go? Amazing. Yeah? 
yeah, absolutely amazing. So, so first, tell us a little bit about you, so we know you. How much? Well, not. <laughs> How much are you comfortable <laughs> telling us? I remember we're PG-13. All right. No. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm a security architect from northern Ohio. Um, I've been doing security-related things for like 10 years. This is my third DEF CON. First time gooning. Wow, was, after two DEF CONs, you decided to goon. Right. You hate yourself. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and from my understanding, you just wrote a book. Yes, I'm in the middle of writing a book. It, it'll, the physical copy will be out in March, but it's, uh, it's pre-released right now already on O'Reilly's website, and it's already on Safari Books oh, online. Oh, that's kind of neat. So you're releasing parts of the book? Yeah, that's how they do it. So they, they do a pre-release, so you can buy it and get chapters as they come out and give feedback for the book. That's kind of impressive. So tell us the name so um, everyone can write it down. <laughs> it's called the Defensive Security Handbook. Um, it's basically... if. It, there's so many companies out there that have no security program or a very young security program where, you know, the tech guys like, oh, security's now a thing. Here's a security department. We want you to fix everything. And they don't really know where to start. Mm. So this is to cover all, of the, all awesome. the different verticals that you would normally find in an enterprise. Awesome. And you said March is when it will be out fully. Yeah, in the physical copy. So now they March. can just kind of get a chapter at a time when you finish it. Right. Awesome. Yep. That's really cool. I never heard of that happening, so that's kind of yeah. neat. And if anybody's interested, I still have coupons for it. So it's like 25% off the physical copy and awesome. 50% off the online. Yeah, you can leave some up here or give them out. Yeah. So DEF CON pictures, what is that? Like you literally just walk around and take pictures of oh, every everything. event? Are there things that you will never be able to unsee? Every DEF CON, there's things <laughs> I'll never be able to unsee. Because <laughs> you guys have a pretty decent slideshow during the closing ceremony. Right, right. So I would imagine you're not the only photographer because we saw others. Right, there's about six of us so now. there must be like thousands of pictures Oh yeah. that you yeah, have to some go of through. Us, some, some of us take about a thousand a day. Wow. And then other, like, I think I only took like three, four hundred yesterday. That's but. amazing. And then you have to go through all them, filter them, find the best ones. Right, And then right. get them up for the slide. Yeah. So a lot of work. And I think uh, we had several people do video also this year, take video of various things. So, oh, okay, go ahead. Oh, and those will be up on the site, right? Right. In a couple mm -hmm. months. Yep. So how was the DEF CON this year? How, how did it run? We were in here, so I don't really know anything <laughs> about the outside world. Just this room. Yeah, yeah. this is room. That's right. all I know. Uh, everything went off great. I think they did a much better job of managing crowds awesome. than they did last year. And, uh I mean, everybody that has gooned was just fantastic. Great. So, awesome. We look forward to next year then. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Amanda. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for stopping by. And again, Amanda's book, when, when uh, you have any questions, she'll stick around for a minute and yep. have some funsies to hang, to, to hand out. Right. Thanks. Yep, thanks, guys. Okay, so we don't have a plan yet for next year. I don't want to promise anything because I swear if I do, uh, my team will kill me. But there will be some changes next year. Some new things, I'm sure. We'll continue with the SECTF, the kids' events. Um, we'll be announcing things. So if you want to know more, the best way is to follow us, Human Hacker on Twitter, Sultry Asian, or uh, SOC Engineer Inc., um, for the corporate Twitter. The website also, we, we put everything on there, so social-engineer.org or social-engineer.com. I've had a ton of questions from people about our training schedule. 2017 is the only training that we have open. Everything in 2016 is sold out. So there was absolutely nothing left except for a OSINT class in the UK um, in November. Uh, that's the only thing that's open in 2016. Everything else is sold out. So we, uh, the training schedule for 2017 is already on the corporate site. So if you have questions on that, you can ask, or you can just check it out there. What am I missing? Um, I guess that's it. Okay. Any questions for us? No? Then thanks for a great DEF CON, guys. I mean, the village was just amazing this year. You guys kept lines from here out to the elevators almost every day, multiple times a day. I love it when uh, the hotel and DEF CON are complaining about that. That makes me happy. And uh, you guys have been blowing up the Twitter feed with, um, with great news about SE Village. So I just I really, really mean this. Thank you 
so much for making this another phenomenal year. Until next year, we'll see you then. Thanks, guys.